Oh, the shirt is off the cuff. Welcome back, everybody, and happy Halloween. Happy Halloween to everybody out there. Uh, our first song today is brought to you by the band Deliverance and their song, Fallen Angel, which is quite apropos it being Halloween. And as uh, some, most of you should know by now, the, fa- the fallen angel is, of course, Lucifer, the devil, Satan himself, the adversary, and any other Beelzebub, Mephist- Mephistopheles, whatever name for the devil you have. is uh, <laughs> He started out as a fallen angel first. From humble beginnings, he worked his way up to be the Lord of Hell. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Welcome, of course, to the uh, Joe the Shirts Off the Cuff Halloween Spectacular. I call it a spectacular because I am, of course, a spick, <laughs> better known as a Puerto Rican. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's really funny to this day. I have friends of mine that are Puerto Rican, and and uh, even other lo- types of Latinos, they get pissed off at me when I, you know, when I call you know Puerto Rican spicks, and I'm like, well. <laughs> It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not really hurting anybody, is it? I mean, <laughs> never. It never hurt my feelings. You know, you can call me a spick. I don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, but it is once again the best holiday of the year. It's better than Christmas. It's better than Thanksgiving. Better than Fourth of July. Better than New Year's Eve. It is. It fuck it. It's better than my birthday to me. Okay, that's how much I love Halloween, and I hope you guys too. Uh, as do as well. Uh, I know there's some people out there that are uh, Halloween haters. Uh, what and what's really uh, well, well, fuck you. Uh, but <laughs> but what's really funny to me is that a lot of times uh, the, the Halloween haters are d- divided among so many different groups. You know, there's the very, very, very you know religious type of groups, you know, you know, you, you, you Christians and shit, shit like that, who are very like, oh, you're worshiping the devil. No, I'm dressing up like an idiot and asking for candy and drinking too much. No, I'm not worshiping the devil. And then, then you have another type of religious, religious groups, which is a lot of times, uh, you have like, maybe sometimes you're Wiccans, you know, they don't like the way we celebrate Halloween. They like the way they celebrate Halloween, which involves apparently a lot of fruity potions and dancing naked, which sounds fun. But I never get invited. <laughs> and, uh, and then, of course, there are just the haters. Those people out there that just can't stand Halloween. They think it's stupid that, uh, you know, you dress up and you, and you decorate the house. And, uh, and I'm like, is that really any dumber than Christmas? I mean, shit, man. At least, at, least when, at least for Halloween, I don't have a gigantic fucking tree in the middle of my house. All right? You know, that's, I think that's kind of stupid. Fucking dogs pissing on it all the fucking time. Uh, cats always trying to knock it over. You know, so, I don't know. I, don't, I, I think the, the Halloween haters, I, I, I never really get them. You know, you know, if you're Halloween neutral, that's fine. You know, you don't, you don't care either way, fine, that's fine. But, but to be a Halloween hater, well, you just suck as a human being. That's what, that's what I'm saying right there. You suck as a human being if you hate Halloween. Uh, <laughs> which may include some of my listeners. Who knows? <laughs> oh, my God. It's so, always such a fun day. Uh, we've got the house decorated. Uh, not too over the top this year. Last year, we went, we went nuts, or shall I say I went nuts. You know, we got, uh, you know, we had, like, f- you know, floating, you know, s- skeleton angels, ghosts, uh, jack-o'-lanterns, uh, a seven-foot-tall I actually think it was like seven foot six, about seven foot tall, seven foot six tall. Uh, uh, what do you call him? Uh, the scarecrow that I put together last year, and he was just gigantic. He was just this massive. He was like the most buff uh, scarecrow you ever saw in your fucking life. Uh, but he was just huge, and I and uh, and we also like decor. We also decorated uh, one of the walls with like that fake spider web stuff, you know, and in, in the spider webs, I had like severed fingers and feet. And, uh, there, there was like, there was, uh, there was, there was spiders, of course, you know, there was vampire bats and bones and shit. And we had like the bright lights, you know, we had orange lights for Halloween and, uh, the neighbors didn't, and we also, uh, decorated the doors, you know, with, uh, these cartoon, you know, werewolves and skeletons and mummies and shit like that and, and i think that's why some of the neighbors didn't really appreciate it because all that stuff was on the outside of the house 
<laughs> and, and, and everybody could see it. And, and, and we live in a condo. <laughs> So yes, I did decorate uh, one of the common area walls. It's not like a little itty bitty like strip of a wall, like a pillar. I'm talking it like stretched like the entire length of uh, <laughs> about half of our apartment. <laughs> Condo board was not pleased, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, it, it's always so much fun to me. Uh, this year, like I said, we, we we took it down a notch. You know, the scarecrow is like a ghost scarecrow. I didn't fill him up. He's not seven feet tall this year. You know, I got the flying demon thing, and um, and uh, and uh, if you haven't checked that out, check it out on Facebook. Either you can check it out on uh, my uh, Facebook page. Uh, that's inappropriate conversation. Uh, check that out. I, I posted pictures of uh, the jack o' lanterns that me and my girlfriend, the Russian, did uh, last night. Uh, a little late for us in the season. Usually we do it about mm, four or five days ahead of time, but uh, we've both been really busy, and she's been super duper busy. So uh, last night, you know. You know, she got done with with all her work. She came home, and we just sat down. We put on a scary movie, and we made our carved our jack o' lanterns. So fuck yeah, man! You know, we had a good time. It's it's always a good time for me. Hold on. Mm. You know, a lot. So many people. You know. You know, and and, uh, and uh, by the way, yes, uh, yes. In fact, I will be dressing up tonight. That's right, I will. And uh, you may have seen uh, the test picture that I posted today as my new uh, Facebook picture and also on Spreaker as my uh, picture on Spreaker. Uh, that is a picture of the Joker uh, from a comic book. And yes, believe it or not, in this comic book, the Joker was in fact bald because he was in a mental institution and they shaved his head and they put him in a straitjacket. So yeah. And I, but, but I'll be going whole hog with it, you know, later on today. And my, my girlfriend is uh, pl going, is, uh, going as like, I don't know, Kiss of the Spider Woman, as far as I know. And it's very hot, very sexy, very pretty outfit that she's got together. You know, I, I, I prefer, you know, going with the scarier themes. But uh, women don't like going with scary themes too often. You know, uh, that, I mean, there are exceptions, but more often than not, uh, women like to go for something sexy or, or of course, something really, really slutty. You know, I, I, love, I love this time of year because it just, every woman on the planet just feels to, you know, bring out her inner slut. You know, it's like every woman that just like all year long has to wear, you know, a, a business suit or they have to wear very a conservative dress. They, you know, come Halloween, it's like six-inch six stilettos, and she uh, wants to pull you over for, for like, a concealed package, you know? So, <laughs> I love it. And what's really great is you go out on Halloween, and all these random slutty women dressed, you know, showing off their tits and their ass and their legs, you know? They're all more than happy to be stopped. And you can ask them, hey, can I take a picture of you or with you even better? And they're more than happy to do it, too. You know, like, <laughs> like I mean, I, I could walk up to a woman, you know, dressed up as a Catholic schoolgirl and ask her if I could take a picture with her, with, with her over my lap, and I'm spanking her. And she'll go, oh, yeah, sure, no problem. And, 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 it, and, it, and it happens. It's such a wonderful time. It's such a wonderful time. You know, you walk up to any, like, slutty nurse and ask her if, you, you know, she, if she'll check your vitals for you. Oh, yeah, she'll do it. She'll do it. Mm -hmm. uh, so much fun. And, uh, yes, I am 44 fucking years old. And, yes, I am going to do it anyway. All right? Uh, love this holiday. It's my favorite holiday. I say even better than my birthday. It truly is. Uh, and, of course, we will, we're, we're going to be going out tonight uh, because, of course, we live in West Hollywood, home of the biggest Halloween party in the world. Uh, and I know you're all thinking to yourself, well, we got some pretty big parties here in Branson. No, you don't. <laughs> we got some pretty big parties here in New York. No, you don't. You, not compared to this. It, 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 okay, let me put it this way. Imagine a street, a large street now, fucking uh, about, talking about six lanes of traffic worth of, of street here. And uh, it's pretty wide. It's very wide. And you go from, uh, let's see, La Cienega to Dohini. That's about a 1.2 mile stretch. Actually, about, well, actually, it's a one mile stretch. Okay? And then into this one mile stretch, pack in 500,000 people. All dressed up for Halloween. 
in costumes, in scary costumes, in slutty costumes, in costumes that require uh, sometimes as many as six people to complete. We're talking singers, dancers, strippers. We're talking food carts. We're talking uh, contests. We're talking 500. That's, that's a Halloween party, man. That's what we get here every fucking year. And I know some of my neighbors, they hate it. They're like, oh, God, why do they have to do this? They, every year they make the neighborhood look so nasty and dirty. And it's just, oh, God, it's so loud. It's like, I couldn't go to sleep. I just couldn't, I couldn't go to sleep. I'm like, yeah, it was 11 o'clock on a Friday. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, I love it when they complain. Uh, <laughs> and, and personally, I love the mess that they make. Because you know what the truth of the matter is? By about mm, noon the next day, 95% of it is gone. All, all the, all the sh shitty shit is gone. Which is why I always like to go out at first light. Because the things that people are willing to leave on the ground after the carnival is a fucking amazing i'm talking uh you know and and some of it's nasty i'll be the first one to tell you because i've seen uh uh articles of clothing like underwear bras i've seen uh shoes uh uh let's see uh, used condoms and yeah i could tell it was used uh my dog had a you know particular interest in it uh so I, uh dildos I've seen on, on just lying on the street, just just there, you know, pieces of costume, and and then of course my favorite is of course the people who have only just figured out that the party's over, the ones that are still like ha halfway still in their costume and they're just trying to stumble their dumb drunk asses home, you know, they they just left somebody's house who they've met last night and will never ever call again and. They're going home, you know, dressed like, you know, Princess Leia, you know, so. <laughs> or actually, in this town, it's West Hollywood, more like Han Solo, <laughs> leaving Luke Skywalker's place. Oh, my. <laughs> so, yes, I do love this holiday in, in, all, in all its regalia. It really, it just, I just love it to death. I mean, I've been dressing up uh, since, uh, really since college, uh, because I used to dress up when I was a young kid. Uh, but only until eight years old when my mother converted she became a Jehovah's Witness and then <clears throat> all the fun stopped so from eight to eight to 17 8 to 18 yeah for 10 years no Halloween for me which pissed me off but so now I uh, maybe maybe I'm overcompensating maybe I'm overdoing it I don't give a shit 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 uh -uh. anyway now, before we take our break, uh, you guys want to do celebrity birthdays now? You want to do that? Let's do celebrity birthdays of people born on Halloween. How about that? Okay. And if you were born today, you celebrate birthdays with Dan Rather is 83 years old. Director Peter Jackson is 53. Actor Dermot Mulroney is 51 years old. Singer Willow Smith, uh, daughter of uh, uh, Will and Jada, is 14 years old. Vanilla Ice, Ice. Baby is 47 years old. Adam Adrock Horowitz is 48. You might know him better from the Beastie Boys. Uh, Deidre Hall is 67. She was on Days of Our Lives. Uh, Jane Paul is 45. No one cares. Uh, in, um, Infanta Leonor of Spain, Princess of Asturia, is 9. Frank Aiero from My Chemical Romance and Skeleton Crew is... Oh my God, I don't have his age here. Shit! Uh, Bud Spencer, a great actor, is 85 years old. And Michael Collins is 84. You're thinking, who the fuck is Michael Collins? Well, you know what? He was one of those fuckers that went to the moon. He's the one that had to stay in the pod so that they didn't get, you know, pod jacked. In any case, here's our next song from <laughs> The Deliverance. It's called Endless Search. I'm Joe the Shirt. I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back.
Joe the Shirt is once again off the cuff. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, boy. You having as much fun as I am? I hope you are. Look, no uh, heavy, heavy shit today. You know, our last show I did what was it yesterday? I think yes, I did it on uh, Sharia, and uh, it's a he- it, it, it was a heavy topic, you know. And I didn't want to do that today. I want to have some fun today. This is a fun, fun day, you know. One of the fun things I've en- I enjoy about this holiday is uh, it's for for my girlfriend because she's with me now. It's the first time she's ever really done Halloween the way you know the way. I do it the way Americans do it. I don't know if she did much of Halloween before that, but uh, up until she met me, she never carved her own pump- pumpkin, never made a jack o' lantern, you know. And I liked introducing people to those things, you know. But, uh, back before I met her, back when I was still married, I had a, I had a pumpkin carving parties, you know. We'd have you know twelve, thirteen people come over to my place. We'd all carve our pumpkins, light them up, put them out in front of my front of the house, you know. Then we'd go inside and you know eat mush- magic mushrooms. You know, so, <laughs> and then after, and then about an hour after the mushrooms set in, then we'd go back outside <laughs> to to look at the pumpkins, <laughs> the jack o' lanterns that were carved, and these horrific faces and glowing eyes, and yeah, then we had to go run back into the house. <laughs> but for some reason, by about four a.m., I kept coming out of the bathroom naked and wet. I'm not sure why, and all I do do know is that the mirror had something to do with it. Ah. Uh. We do a lot of things for Halloween. You know, we dress up, we go out, we party, and of course, we, we watch <clears throat> horror movies. Now, I went to two different sources today. Uh, the first one is Rotten Tomatoes. The other one is from IMDb. Uh, those are both websites, imdb.com, rottentomatoes.com. And uh, they both seem to think they know a lot about movies. And they put together a list of the top horror movies of all time. Okay, I, I have both lists here. They're top ten. And you tell me, you, you tell me, do you think uh, they, either of them, which one got it right, you know? Because they're very different movies, very different list. Okay, top ten horror movies from uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, number ten, Aliens, circa 1986. Uh, number nine, Let the Right One In, circa 19, 2008. Now, before I go any further, okay, I've seen both of these movies. Okay, Aliens is not a horror movie. You know, maybe sci-fi horror is the way to go, but I never considered it a horror movie, you know. I mean, because, I don't know, it never gave me that horror jump, you know. Uh, and by the way, Let the Right One In, uh, I, to me it seemed like, you know, uh, it, seemed, it seemed more like a romance drama to me. I, I didn't find it scary at all. Uh, let's see, next we, number eight, we have Rosemary's Baby, 1968. Now, this movie was fucking scary. It's, well, it scared the piss out of me anyway because, you know, you had this whole idea of a conspiracy of uh, Satan worshippers that, you know, purposely got some poor woman pregnant with the devil's child so that the devil can be born on earth. And, and it was really kind of creepy. Uh, number seven, Frankenstein. 1931. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, the original Frankenstein. Okay. Uh, Boris Karloff. You know what? It's a great movie. I loved it. But I watched it when I was a little kid, and it didn't scare me at all. I, I thought it was fantastic. I thought, I mean, it was just beautiful. It was all shot in the old black and white, and you had the monster and all that. But I, never, I was never scared of Frankenstein. Never was. Frankenstein's monster never scared me, uh, which is some, something that like, so many of you keep fucking up. You keep com- confusing the monster with the Dr. Frankenstein. The monster never had a name. Uh, but, uh, yeah, not, not particularly scary to me. Uh, next movie we have up, uh, this one uh, does qualify, Psycho, 1960. This movie, Norman Bates, uh, thinking that he, he was his mother and killing people for her. and for, oh, okay. it, was, uh, it was out there, and the visuals in that movie were just spectacular, you know? It, it really had it going on. Another confusing one, The Bride of Frankenstein, 1935, at number five. Again, not scary. If anything, it was fucking funny. Um... <laughs> Number four, this one, uh, in my opinion, does not qualify at all, uh, but, but it's a movie that I love anyway, King Kong at number four. King Kong wasn't scary, I mean, unless you happen to be a tribal villager and you had some gigantic monkey like bite, biting down on you, but otherwise, no. Uh, 1954, okay. Uh, here's a movie I don't know, it's called Repulsion, 1965, I can't tell you anything about it. At number two, we have Nosferatu, A Symphony of Horror. 1922. Now, this movie I have seen, and if you haven't seen it, go ahead to uh, you know watch it. It's 
it's it's got a distinct creep factor to it. It makes you want to go, ooh, you know, it, it really does. And the same with the last movie, uh, Das Cabinet de Dr. Caligari, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Uh, this is 1920, uh, the oldest movie in the list. And this movie, again, creepy. You know, it's, it's the kind of movie that, like, puts you on edge. Uh, do you call it horror? I don't know, maybe. You probably, for back then, I would say it would be, but back then it was cutting edge. And that's the list. That was number one from uh, Rotten Tomatoes. From IMDb, first uh, movie we have, number 10, is one I don't recognize, Battle Royale from Japan, two th year 2000. I do not know anything about it. And no, I didn't do the research on it because I was trying to get the show out today. Number nine, not a horror movie, Shaun of the Dead, 2004. I, I, t I, took, I took the Russian out on one of our first dates to go see this movie. It was fucking funny. It's a comedy. It's not scary. Uh, number eight, The Sixth Sense. Who was scared of The Sixth Sense? Any of you out there really scared of The Sixth Sense? I, I mean, there were a couple of like, little whoo, moments here and there, but honestly, not really. Uh, number seven, Saw. Now, Saw was disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> and it did have a lot of shock value to it. So I think for pure scaring you, I think Saw does work. And, and it's definitely a lot gorier. Now, this one's a classic. Uh, and I completely agree with this. Night of the Living Dead, 1968. The original. Uh, Georgie Romero? Uh, I'm trying to remember. The, forget you know, the name right. But um, this movie just creeped out the shit out of me. It was all done in black and white. And, you know, the ghosts just having... The, the zombies having this very eerie effect and walk to them and you know they would see them they would practically like glow in the dark and it, it it's, it's one of those movies that you're just like oh my god the world's gone to titties and shit and not in a good way <laughs> uh number five very scary movie the silence of the lambs 1991 this movie was so scary that my ex-girlfriend nicole when we got home she made me go in first and turn on all the lights and check under the bed which I thought was pretty shitty of her because, you know, there was actual serial killer in there. Well, he'd get me and she'd try to get away. I guess that was pretty smart of her. Uh, number four, Scream, 1996. You know, this movie <laughs> was, did have its scary moments, but you couldn't help but laugh half the time. Uh, number three, Halloween, 1978. Fantastic movie. Uh, an absolute classic. Uh, it was a Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, you know, got to see, you know, not, there's nothing like a, a, cr a crazed, gigantic maniac killing half-naked women. I mean, who doesn't love that? Uh, number two, I, I don't agree with this one as a horror movie either, more of a thriller. This one's Seven, the movie Seven with Brad Pitt. Uh, that's 1995. Don't agree with that one necessarily. And the number one scariest movie, according to IMDb, best horror movie, is 28 Days Later from 2002. That's another crazy zombie movie. But in this one, the zombies, you know, they don't, they, 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 they know how to run, which is, uh, <laughs> it's like, who taught the zombies how to run? Fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. I need some water here. Ugh. I, for, me, for my money, I think IMDb got it closer than Rotten Tomatoes. You guys tell me, you know. Mm. Uh, coming up next, I got a lot of lists for you today, guys, because, uh, you know, I like to share Halloween information with everybody. Mm. Top 10 most popular Halloween costumes this year. This is from 2014. They're the costumes that the kids are going out there and dressing in, and this is what they're doing, all right? Number 10. Any of the Disney princesses, you know, uh, Princess Jasmine, Snow White, Cinderella, that's number 10. That's 10th most popular costume right there. Uh, and I don't necessarily mean it's only little girls. Um, uh, anything zombie. You know, it could be zombie policeman, zombie doctor, uh, zombie gymnast, you know, zombie McDonald's worker, whatever. As long as you, you're, you're basically wearing two costumes, okay? The, 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 you're, you're a zombie, but you have a job, you know? So, <laughs> so there's a good chance you'll meet somebody. Number eight, uh, Monster High Fashionista. Basically, this meaning that, you, yeah, you're dressed up as a monster, but, you know, you're really hip and cool about it. Uh, Cirque du Burlesque Sexy. Uh, if you've ever seen a Cirque du, Burlesque, Cirque du Soleil or a burlesque show, 
smash those together and that's they, there's your outfit uh, uh, number six stylish superheroes these this is not just you know you go out and you buy yourself a costume that looks exactly like what the superhero wears you get a sense of the superhero but with your own flair to it uh, number five uh, geek chic uh, geek chic uh, this and this one is like yes you're a nerd but you're a styling nerd I mean you're a hip happening kind of nerd I mean that that was is that a Gucci pocket protector oh my god uh, number three any type of gothy skeletons that are sexy somehow it's all it's all a lot of black and white a lot of eye makeup and you can see your skeletons number two uh, minions from the movie Despicable Me. Yes, those lovable little one, two, and three-eyed characters. They're yellow and just go around going <laughs> or whatever sound it is they fucking make. And the number one uh, Halloween costume this year: any character from Frozen. Th that movie Frozen. <laughs> You can be uh, Princess Elsa or Princess whoever the fuck the other bitch is. Um, <laughs> I saw this movie. Talk about an overrated piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> you know, not that it was a bad movie, but it was just like, you know, the way the critics were talking about this, it was like the second coming of Christ, you know? And, then, and my girlfriend and I, you know, we decided to rent it at home. We're watching it. And I'm like, I don't feel any more magical. Do you, babe? Nah. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, another one of the things I love about Halloween is uh, TV. I love that uh, only very recently, in the last year or two, TV shows started doing uh, holiday theme episodes. I don't know if you remember, from back in the 70s and the 80s, and maybe into the, like the early 90s, TV shows, you know, when a holiday came around, Christmas, you know, Thanksgiving, you know, Halloween, they would do a theme episode based on that holiday. And I always thought it was fun, you know, because they'd all get into the spirit of it one way or the other. And for the last 20 years, you know, they didn't do that. You know, for the last over 20 years, they just, you know, it's like, you know, holidays came and went and uh, nobody did a theme episode. And they have recently started doing that. As a matter of fact, we just watched uh, Two and a Half Men last night, you know, and that was great. You know, you had uh, Ashton Kutcher dressed up as Zombie Elvis and you had a... Uh, uh, Oh God! What's the other guy? John Cryer, uh, dressed up as his character Ducky Boy from Pretty in Pink, and I got to tell you, he looked almost exactly like he did from like twenty fucking years ago, man. It was amazing. Oh my God! Uh, uh. Now, uh, one of the great things about Halloween was uh, trick or treating, and uh, there's a big push these days to not let your kids go trick-or-treating there. You know, it's too dangerous out there. You never know what kind of psychos are out there. You never know what, what, what's going to be in your kid's candy. I mean, this, this is not a new thing, but it's, it's, I think it's gone a little overboard. I mean, it was, pretty, it was pretty nutsy. Like, back in the 70s, when I was still allowed to go trick-or-treating, uh, they, they would tell you to, like, you know, uh, take your candy and take it to a hospital to get it x-rayed, you know, in case somebody, somebody was putting needles or glass in your candy. Or, uh, or, or, or even wilder, there would be like x-ray trucks that would you know, troll through neighborhoods and if you, know, you, and you could walk up to them and say, hey, can you scan my candy for any broken glass or needles, whatever the other sick shit might be in there? And I'm going to get back to that right after this break. This is more deliverance in their song, Embrace. I'm Joe the Shirt, I'm off the cuff, and I'll be right back.
and and Joe the shirt is off the cuff. <laughs> okay, a little bit longer break than I originally intended. Uh, I had to go pee. That's why I'm a lot of breath there. Just like the phone calls I make to my ex-girlfriend. Okay, then. <laughs> you were talking about trick-or-treating and how, uh, you know, the last several decades, uh, God, <laughs> I mean, I do mean a lot of decades now. Uh, you know, for one of the reasons you do Halloween is for, for kids. It's fun for the kids, you know, and of course, you know, the retail stores love that, that you're spending all this money, you know. But remember, it's good for the economy. Um <laughs> You know, but but it's you know it's it's really it's originally designed as a kids' holiday. You know, where the kids they get to dress up, they get to go hang out with their friends, they go door to door, they go trick or treat. You know, basically you know begging people for candy, and uh, you know, and you and and you know and then and then you go home and you have all this candy, and your mother you know steals a bunch of it. You know, and you <laughs> and then tells you don't eat it all at once. You know, it's gonna give you a tummy ache, whatever. You know, and now there's this big push, even even bigger than back then, because back then it was like, you know, okay, you can go trick or treating, but you got to be safe. Now it's you're not going trick or treating. You can, I'll, we'll get you a costume, and you can hang out here in the house. <laughs> or, or they got to make sure that they're taking the kids to a uh, family friendly, uh, parent, uh, you know, uh, chaperoned uh, party. You know, or you know. Basically, they leave your ass in a costume at home and they go out and party, you know, and and it's I think it's kind of sad that, you know, nobody goes trick or treating anymore. I mean, last time I got a trick or treater at my front door was with my ex-wife before I married her. So that was a while ago. OK, we're talking about mm, at least 15 years ago. You know, that was the last time we got any trick or treaters and we only got like two. You know, we got all this candy. We were all ready, you know, and nobody came by. So then for the next month, my, 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 my ex-wife was just complaining about how I was making her fat by getting all this candy in the house. And I'm like, bitch, you don't have to eat it. Um, and so there tends to be this trend, you know, for kid, you know, for parents to not let their kids trick or, trick or treating because it's too dangerous. You might get abducted. And actually, and, but uh, according to some piece of data that I came upon today, an estimated 41 million children here in the United States are going out trick-or-treating this year. 41 million. Okay. Considering we live in a country of just about a little over 300 million, that means that roughly 10% of the, more than 10% of the population is going to go out knocking door to door going trick-or-treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat, you know. <laughs> You know, and I think I think it's great. I think uh, kids should be allowed to go trick or treating. You know, I understand the dangers of the world we live in. You know what? If you're a concerned parent, go out with your fucking kid. Then you know, take them trick or treating. You know, or uh, you know, there's some neighborhoods actually here in uh, Los Angeles. There's some neighborhoods that have been de designated as trick or treater zones, where all all the houses on the street have all agreed. You know to provide a safe street, safe area for trick-or-treaters to come by and get candy, you know? But, you know, you know, if, you know take a kid trick-or-treating, dress up a little bit, you know, go, go crazy, you know? You know, they're less likely to be abducted that way. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, cities that are good for Halloween, I have two lists for you. The 10 best and worst cities for Halloween. If you happen to want to celebrate Halloween and you have kids that you want to celebrate Halloween, well, or, or if you're just a big kid and you want to celebrate Halloween, these are the 10 best cities to have fun uh, in uh, the United States. Number 10, Las Vegas. Okay, that one's not for the kids. <laughs> I would, I, I've never done Vegas for Halloween. I, I'd like to, actually. I'm going to try to convince the Russian for maybe next year to go for Halloween. Because, uh, I mean, people dress up slutty in Las Vegas to begin with. <laughs> you know, Las Vegas is like, is, is like, uh, it's, it's like New Year's Eve and Halloween all rolled up into one every day. But I can't imagine what it looks like on actual Halloween. <laughs> uh, number nine, Arlington, Texas. 
Uh, number eight, Denver, Colorado. Number seven, Chandler, uh, Arizona. Number six, Garland, Texas. Number five, Irving, Texas. Number four, Santa Ana, California. Number three, Dallas, Texas. Number two, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And number one, the number one city in the United States for, for celebrating Halloween, according to this particular poll, St. Paul, Minnesota. But I got to tell you, though, uh, Texas came up with a lot of, let's see, one, two, three, four cities in Texas. Don't mess with Texas when it comes to Halloween is what we're saying here. Now, for the 10 worst cities in uh, the United States for celebrating uh, Halloween, number 10, Kansas City, Missouri. I have friends in Kansas City, Missouri. You guys suck at Halloween? You're only number 10? No, no, no. The number 10, <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri, that's... That's, and actually, yeah, 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 that, yeah, that sucks. Actually, you, one of the ten worst cities. You're number ten. You, you, mean, you could you could be less fun, but uh, right now you're number ten. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, number nine. Number eight, Toledo, Ohio. That one actually kind of surprises me. Number seven, Stockton, California. Number six, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, number five, Detroit, Michigan. Well, shit, yeah. They they have no power. It's like fucking Halloween there all night and day long. Uh, number four, Anchorage, Alaska. I'm guessing there's a lot of space between igloos when it comes to trick-or-treating. Number three, Nashville, Tennessee. I, know I could see where that would suck because, you know, you got everybody dressed as Elvis. I mean, what's the point, really? Uh, number two, Jacksonville, Florida, and the number one most ter most terrible place in the United States for celebrating Halloween, Winston Salem, North Carolina. Wow. I guess that's because they just give out those, you know, trick or treaters come to your door, come to go to people's doors, and they just give them out those little mini packets of cigarettes. You know, they don't give them the full carton size or the full pack size. I know that's horrible. <laughs> I'm surprised Los Angeles, West Hollywood. I mean, is not mentioned here at all. Uh, you know, I don't know how I don't know how they determined best and worst. You know, I don't know how they. I guess I don't know. Maybe maybe a one mile stretch of 500,000 people half naked is not their idea of Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what do we got here? Okay, how about we got another list here? Like I said, I love my list today. Uh, the 10 best Halloween songs. Now, you guys, do yourself a, do yourself a favor. You know, think, put yourself in the favorite mind. Think of Halloween. Think of music. Mash them together and think. see if you can come up with any of the Halloween songs on your own. You know? And then maybe after you listen to the show, go to somebody, go to your, go to your friend and see, and tell them the same thing. And then, and then you give them the answers and see how many they get right. Let's see if you get any of these, you know, occurred to your minds. Number ten, this is Halloween. This is Halloween from the movie The Nightmare Before Christmas, and, and made by Danny Elfman. Uh, number nine, Highway to Hell by ACDC. I know I did that horribly. Uh, number eight, Don't Fear the Reaper. By Blue Oyster Cult. Don't fear the Reaper. Is it, isn't that the cowbell song? Uh, number seven, uh, Creep by Radiohead, which I'm not sure why that, why that qualifies. Uh, Superstition by Stevie Wonder. Uh, number five, this one definitely qualifies in my opinion. Uh, Werewolves of London. Ah, uh, ooh, by Warren Zevon. Uh, number four, Deal with the Devil by Pop Evil. Well, that's just a gimme, I guess. Uh, <laughs> number three, uh, talk about a gimme, Ghostbusters, Who You Gonna Call by Ray Parker Jr. Number two, Monster Mash by Bobby Boris Pickett and the Crypt Killers. You did the mash. You did the monster mash. The monster mash. And the number one song for Halloween. Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds now. Think about it. Can you can you can you say it out loud before I say it? I'm gonna give you five more seconds to come up with the number one song for Halloween. Okay? Five seconds. I'm waiting, almost there. And the number one song for Halloween is Thriller! 
Thriller Night. That's right. The song Thriller by Michael Jackson is the number one song of Halloween. Well, like any good holiday, um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we all do our fair share of drinking around here, especially here in West Hollywood, believe you me. Uh, the lady and I are planning to possibly step by our local uh, bar, Barney's Beanery, which will be chock full of slutty everything and uh, all sorts of manner of being. Uh, it's also the only straight bar in the entire neighborhood. Uh, you go east, gay bar, gay bar, gay bar, gay bar, gay bar, gay bar, gay bar. You go west, gay bar, gay bar, lesbian bar, gay bar, gay bar, gay bar, lesbian bar, gay bar, gay bar. And uh, I have nothing against the gays. Love the gays. They, they put on a good show. I got to tell you, you have to come down here sometime and check it out. But um, we got some stats here uh, on the most dangerous holidays for drinking. Uh, number one... Uh, the most dangerous day for drinking and driving? Independence Day. But only if it occurs on a three-day weekend. Like if, like if like 4th of July is on a Friday or a Monday, that's the only time it qualifies as the most dangerous. Otherwise, the number one spot goes to Thanksgiving, believe it or not, with 572 deaths a year and 143 deaths per day of the holiday. Uh, of those deaths, traffic deaths, uh, 36% are accountable to drunk drivers. Uh, number th number three is New Year's Eve, uh, which where 42% are accounted for by drunk drivers uh, at 140 for the day. Uh, Labor Day, amazingly enough, the three-day weekend. Apparently, three-day weekends is when you all decide to go out and really fuck yourselves up. Except, of course, on Thanksgiving, where you have four days and really fuck yourself up. Where with 503 over the weekend, 167 a day. Christmas Day actually has, has one of the lowest uh, counts, is uh, 133 you know, per year. Um, Memorial Day weekend, again, another weekend at 161 per day for the three-day weekend and 483 total for the, for the full weekend. <sighs> number, that's, number, that's number six there. Uh, the number seven, believe it or not, is not St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day, uh, as, as a matter of fact, it, th this may surprise you, St. Patrick's Day, the number of accidents that occur on St. Patrick's Day, no measurable difference between St. Patrick's Day and any other regular day of the week. As a matter of fact, March, the month of March, has the least number of drunk driving deaths of the entire year. So, uh, I mean, there are exceptions, of course, and, and in order of severity to safest, uh, the most dangerous day to have St. Patrick's Day for drunk drivers is Saturday, followed by Friday, followed by Sunday, then Thursday, Wednesday, Monday, and the safest St. Patrick's Day you can possibly have is Tuesday. But again, even on Saturday, negligible compared to any other Saturday. Halloween, uh, honestly, not a big drinking holiday, except here in this neighborhood. Uh, but it does share one distinct uh, sad tie with uh, New Year's Eve, and that is the most pedestrian deaths, because you have a lot of people dressed up in dark costumes, you have a lot of kids walking around the street, and there's a good chance you're going to get hit by a car, and a lot of times, it, most of the time, will have nothing to do with the drunk driver. It's just they didn't see you because you're dressed like a ninja at, at night. And the, and the number ninth uh, most dangerous holiday, actually not a holiday, but uh, is actually uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And it's not before the game. It's not during the game. It's after the game. Any case, that is it for me, man. I'm, I'm out of here. I'm done for the day, man. I got, I got to get my costume ready. But thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this bestest of all holidays. Uh, it's my fave. I hope it's yours. And uh, we're gonna, I'm going to let you go here with one more song by The Deliverance and uh, their song, Traces. I'm Joe the Shirt, and I've been off the cuff. Happy Halloween. This has been the Halloween Spectacular. Whoa, ha, 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 ha.